Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This is Takedown. Well, from the departure of his longtime friend and associate head coach to the recently announced tussle for the troops, it's been a busy offseason for Pat Papalizio and his program. The leader of the pack joined us on Saturday's Takedown Radio to talk about the upcoming season and all the major storylines out of NC State. You know, anytime uh, you're around great people, there's going to be opportunities for the next level of their career. And that was something Frank was very upfront about what he wanted to accomplish. He's been on a few interviews, had some other opportunities in the past that maybe weren't the right situation for him or timing. So this one came about, and, you know, I don't ever want to see somebody leave that's having a major impact on your program. But at the same time, you know, you want to see these guys go on and, and have wonderful careers and He's put us in a great place and elevated our program. So it's sad to see him leave because you don't replace somebody like Frank Beasley. But we've learned a lot from each other and very appreciative of what he's done because his work ethic is going to be very hard to, to replace. So I know he's going to do some great things at Georgia Mason. Have you guys have you guys started to – are you guys going to hire up within or what's the plan to replace Frank? Uh, we've already had somebody that's – Probably we were hoping to get it official and signed by uh, Friday, 5 o'clock, so they could be on the road recruiting. But looks like more like Monday is when it's all going to get finalized with paperwork and everything, just some uh, HR stuff. But, yeah, we're in a good spot. You know, we've got a lot of guys here already connected to our program, and everybody plays their role to a T. And uh, we talked about moving some people up and around, but everybody agreed with the training that they want to do and the – club situation that we're in right now we felt it was best for our program to keep people where they're at and bring somebody else in that can focus a little more on recruiting how are you approaching you you know your wrestling club and how are you managing both between the college program and your club you know these rtcs are new territory for everybody they obviously have been around with clubs but i think it's new territory it's having an impact on the international level in usa wrestling obviously i think everybody working together is making college wrestling and international wrestling at a higher level and that's the goal we got to continue to all work and kind of implement you know the, the different rules with ncaa and the rtcs because there's a lot of moving components with it and i think that's probably the biggest thing right now is just getting some concrete uh rules in place that that work together but, we, you know, something that we've been doing and, and trying to maintain is kind of build it within. And when we first got here, that was our blueprint, is to get these guys educated that wrestle here at NC State and then implement them as soon as they graduate, if that's their goal, to stick around and do that. And we've been fortunate enough to have guys that, you know, have come here, had pretty successful careers and want to stay around and keep training internationally and you know, we've been working hard to gain some more resources, and it, it was kind of a five-year plan, and we're starting right now. This is our first year really going full force with sending guys to tournaments that we want to go to and, and different tours that they can be a part of. And obviously, Nick, this summer, you know, bringing home a medal, I thought was a uh, huge, huge <laughs> success for the RTC. And, and obviously, Nick himself showing that if you – invest your time and energy into something you're going to get rewarded didn't you guys just get a renovation to your guys' arena yes we have a beautiful 35 million dollar renovation that happened over a year ago and it is first class facility and it decorates all the history of all the different programs on campus right in reynolds coliseum and that's you know i think speaks volume of our administration and leadership from dr yao and obviously the chancellor here at the school that's Big in the athletics, and it's been to several wrestling matches. So, you know, that's had an impact on a lot of different things. But when that gets packed in this year with some of our home matches, it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. And, and it's one of the things we're going to work on is for a couple of these duels that we have is trying to, to break our attendance record. All right, don't forget, you can listen to the full interview with Coach Pop along with the entire two-hour radio broadcast absolutely free at TakedownWrestle.com. We've got more news after the break. Stick around. You're watching Takedown Wrestling. Thanks to Casey's General Stores. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited-time-only Philly Cheesesteak Pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Benavene, Benavene Chevrolet and Granger. 
We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting and you should too. After losing five starters to graduation, Tom Brands and the Hawkeyes will have some major holes to fill in 2017. November 4th, fans will get their first opportunity to look at the future. Max Muir and Jacob Warner and other members of the Hawks' top-rated incoming class will wrestle off in Iowa City. Tom Brands recently met with the alumni and supporters to talk about his team. You know, here's the thing. Every year you get excited. Every year we're excited. Every year our guys are excited. And what it comes down to is we got to do the job. It's been a while uh, since, since we've won a national championship. And that's kind of like an old theme. And I say that a lot. And so it gets old for me to say it. I don't know if it gets old, old for you to hear it or not, but I say it a lot. And we have to do a better job. Uh, we're ranked anywhere from seven to 10 right now, but those rankings are based more on returning points and um, rankings of some of our first year guys that, you know, unless I miss my guess, I'm not gonna make predictions, but they're gonna do a little bit better than being, you know, 14th. And 14th in the country doesn't score you any points in the national tournament. You know, you gotta be an All-American to score points, and if you're in eighth or seventh or sixth or fifth or fourth or third or second, then you're not scoring enough points. And all of a sudden you move some of those new guys that are in our room, like Alex Marinelli, like Caleb Young, like Spencer Lee, uh, a couple of these other guys, and then you add to it, like guys that didn't really get the job done, but had decent years last year, like Cash Wilkie, like uh, Joey Gunther, and you get those guys going a little bit. Um, and then you get a guy like Sam Stoll, who's healthy, and then you got our two All-Americans, Brandon Sorensen and Michael Kemmer. Now that, that's a pretty good recipe for a good team. Is it a great team? I don't know, I'll tell you in March, just like you'll find out in March. Um, as we go through it, we'll get to know how these young guys hold up. The thing about it is you don't know a lot about these young guys. We know a lot about them because we're with them every day. And so the things that you're gonna see on the mat are gonna probably be like pleasant surprises to you, but it won't be a surprise to us. We fully uh, expect them to, to do their job and do it well. And that doesn't mean that there won't be maybe learning, whatever, because they're not veterans, but really they are. I mean, think about it, they've been wrestling their whole life. And they've been wrestling their whole life uh, to win big tournaments, and they've won big tournaments their whole life, and now this is just another level. And that's kind of how Gilman, that's kind of how Gilman was in the World Championship. It was his first event, how was he gonna do? And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And you just go out and you do the job and you go. It doesn't matter how you feel, it doesn't matter you know, what's going on, distractions, there are none. Um, we're here to get education, we're here to compete, and if we're gonna be getting an education, we might as well do it right, get a job and a meaningful career, and if we're gonna compete, we might as well do it right and win. Three-time All-American A.J. Shop is headed back east as the newest assistant at Purdue. One of the nation's premier lightweights while at Edinburgh, Shop spent the past two seasons at South Dakota State where he helped guide the Jacks to their most successful stretch in school history. From the Purdue Athletic Department, here's A.J. Shop on his move to West Lafayette. I think it's a good, you know, personal opportunity for me to, you know, get, get closer to family, um, being a Big Ten. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I plan on competing, so, you know, I feel like it's another, another good route to go, and um, I'm super excited to be here. There is quite a few good guys on the team, so it definitely gets me super excited to, to get to work with them. Um, you know, I feel like wherever you go, there's going to be some good kids, and at Purdue, there's already some really good kids here, so I'm super excited to get to work with them, and hopefully 
we can uh, get some national titles, get get quite a few All Americans, and uh, you know, put 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 our stamp on the Big Ten. You know, there's not many other sports where the coaches are out there grinding out without athletes. So you know, what I mean, to to be out there and be able to put your hands on them and you know, really get to see how well they are, how how good they're doing, how much they're improving. It's 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 good to see it from the visual side, but when you can actually um, compete against them, you know, and have them compete against you and and start to learn from that aspect of it, it's a uh, it's definitely a very unique um, situation in wrestling that we have. And you know, there obviously there's there's a ton of different ways to 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 be a coach and to be able to experience and be at different places and learn from from some great people. It, 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 it's awesome, and I feel like I've been around some great people and uh, just keep learning and you know I, I'm someone I, I like to be able to put my two cents in but I understand I do not know everything and you know I definitely have an open mind I want to be able to, to learn and you know I, I plan on being a head coach someday so to be able to you know keep uh, advancing my skills and um, honing them in and it's, you know I'm, I'm excited so. With 1,200 season tickets sold, there's a lot of excitement surrounding Rutgers wrestling. Here's Scarlet Knights head coach Scotty Goodell on the recent milestone and wrestling in Yankee Stadium. Just got done finishing up practice here at College Ave yeah, Gym downstairs. Uh, we're excited. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the fans out there. Just today, we hit 1,700 season tickets. That's a really big deal. That's a lot of loyal fans in the state of New Jersey and Rutgers University. So just take this time to appreciate all you guys and thanks for all your support. We do want to make this one final push to get to 2,000. Uh, that, that was our goal when we set out to do this in the middle of summer. So we're, we're 300 tickets away. So all you loyal wrestling fans out there in this state, let's get on board and get some season tickets. As we, as we prepare for November 4th, our Yankee Stadium match, uh, at Yankee Stadium, obviously, and we, we would like all of you to come out and support not only our wrestling program, but our football program. Not sure our times yet, but we'll get those out to you as soon as possible. But again, thanks to all the Rutgers wrestling fans out there. They not only season tickets, but looking forward to seeing you all at the Yankee Stadium. Our preseason coverage continues after this short time out. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Yellow Blue LED. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. Pureandcleansports.com.
With the college wrestling season literally around the corner, the NCAA sat down with some of the nation's most popular athletes to talk about what makes our sport so special. Let's take a look. Wrestling is great to me because anyone can do it. You can be big, you can be small, you can be wide, you can be thin. Um, this sport is, re is really for anyone and everyone, and I think that's what makes it such a great sport to be a part of. Anyone can do it. I think that's what makes it great. You know, I, I don't think I was very talented when I first started. You know, I, my first match ever, I got pinned. So anyone can do it. You just got to work and, and enjoy it. To me, my favorite part about wrestling is the ability to always improve. In a lot of sports, I feel like you can master it in, in some way, but mastering every wrestling position is a lifelong deal. I think what makes wrestling great is the, is the, the people that you get involved with, you know, the, the, the drive and the passion that you have to have, and the, the, re, and the fact that everyone that you, probably, that you meet has that. You know, they have this passion, they have this drive, they have a willingness to, to, to wear their bodies down day after day after day, and then come in and, and wrestle and, and, and go against another human being and, and go against everything they are and everything they have each and every time on every weekend. You know, it's something that truly takes a full, full heart, full mind, and a full passion about. And uh, I would think that that's what makes wrestling great, is that the people that are involved in that and take that that, I guess, that bow to, to be everything they can be, to be the best they can be, and one of the greatest sports in the world. It's, it's your blood, sweat, tears. It's, uh, it's the past couple months you've been training, and it's all on your back. There's no one else out there that you can rely on except for you and only you, and that's, that's, that's what I, I love about the sport. Oh, it's a tough sport, I think. That's part of the reason some people don't like wrestling is because it's a tough sport, and a lot of people want it easy. Wrestling is just different, it's individualized, and it's, it's me out there doing what I can do, so. What makes wrestling great is, you know, the ability to uh, shake a kid's hand in the beginning and the end. You know, it's a level of respect. Um, you, guys, you guys are warriors, you know, two men, especially college, are wrestling and, and competing, you know, for something they've been trained for their whole life, and, you know. The and, atmosphere, it's unmatched by any other sport. You know, it's just, enthused fans screaming the entire time. It's awesome. Just the honor of it and the respect. I just really enjoy it. I mean, it's just something that you kind of get out of it, what you put into it, and it's fun for me to compete and practice and just I've grown to love the sport after doing it for so long, and it's just something that I'll definitely um, hope to continue for as long as I can. Ferrum College has a new head coach. She'll join us right after the break. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
All right, welcome back. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends at Adidas Wrestling. Ferrum College has announced the hiring of our good friend Jessica Medina to the position of women's head coach. A two-time national champ at the University of Cumberland's, Medina was a member of six U.S. national teams and a Pan Am finalist in 2009. She takes over a program with 11 athletes returning from last season and six new faces in the lineup. So live from Ferrum, Virginia, we welcome the Panthers' new head coach. Good morning, Jessica. How are you? I am great. It's been a long morning, but it's been great. You've come through um, coaching, I think, in the right way. If you think about where you started, you were the head girls coach at Beat the Streets Philly. Prior to that, assistant coach at Montini Catholic in Lombardi, Illinois. Uh, you were the first woman to coach it at the Illinois High School Association State Finals. You've set the the bar, and yet you're still following other trailblazers and pioneers. Can you talk about your start in, in women's wrestling? And should can we just drop women's? Can we just say wrestling, please? I would love that. Um, yeah, so I began wrestling in high school about my junior year, and, you know, I, I think wrestling found me, which I had no clue what that entailed. So, um, you know, I wrestled two years and I never really thought about competing in college until my uh, coaches brought up that opportunity. So I went on to wrestle for four years at University of the Cumberlands and enjoyed my four years. I was able to attain my degree, um, accomplish a lot of my career goals. And then after that, you know, I was figuring out where I wanted to go with my career, whether I wanted to um, retire at that point, or if I wanted to continue schooling. And once again, uh, my coaches stepped in and they thought, you know, I had um, just more growth in my career and I was, and it shouldn't, you know, would have ended a little too early. So, you know, so it, it's been amazing because I've been able to train under all these coaches and get a lot of different experiences, whether, you know, it's been at the Olympic Training Center, when it, whether it's been at a D1 program, when it, whether it's been at you know, one of the top high schools in the nation. So um, I've just taken notes over the years, I guess, and and kind of just transitioned with it and kind of flowed with it. And, um, yeah, that's that's been my journey with wrestling. What was your first uh, thought when you heard that there were coaches like Tom Brands, Terry Steiner, et cetera, putting their name, putting their signature to the document that requests that NCAA add women's wrestling as an emerging sport? Well, with Terry, there's definitely no surprise there. Um, you know, with brands and and a lot of other coaches, it's just it's exciting. Um, you know, I think it's been a long time coming, but it's really exciting for people to step up and and put that out there. And I think as a sport too, um, you know, we're just we're trying to grow and we're trying to to find a way to get people excited about wrestling. People who don't know about wrestling, so I think. Um, when people like that step out, it, it really brings a lot of positive attention to the sport. So I think it's great in general, not just for the women's program, just for wrestling. Um, it seems to me as if, you know, 15, 20 years ago, if we'd had women's wrestling all along and recognized women's wrestling for what it is and what it can be, we wouldn't be dropping as many men's programs, or at the time we would not have dropped as many men's programs as we had. Uh, would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Um, I think it brought division as well between men's and women's wrestling. And, you know, it, it sooner or later it was going to happen. And obviously it would have been great for the sport, um, not just for women's wrestling. Um, but now, you, you know, there's a paradigm shift. And again, people um, like Brands um, and Smith and, you know, they're they're really supporting it. So I think, you know, you can't force people um, to an, accept a new idea, you know, and, and it's not a crazy idea. You know, we're talking about wrestling, we're talking about athletes, but it, it's a paradigm shift and it started with our wrestling community. So once we, I feel like we still have a lot of people to win over. Um, you know, we we're trying to get sanctioning for, for girls in high school. That's a, a you know, an, another part of women's wrestling that, um, you know, we're still working on and it's expanding, but again, I think it starts, with us winning people over within the sport. And then I think we'll win people over, you know, nationwide, worldwide. 
Jessica Medina is our guest today, live from Ferrum, Virginia. She's the new head coach of Ferrum College. She'll be the uh, great next coach of this program. Mark my words. She'll put her mark on it and mark on women's wrestling as she continues her career. Jessica, thank you so very much for taking the time, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing to monitor your career and uh, tell the story as it unfolds. Great. Thank you, Scott. All right, special thanks to the NCAA, along with our friends at MC22 and the Purdue Athletics Department. Don't forget, fans, you can look for us online for the major stories in our sport, along with interviews, prizes, and a lot more. Free anytime at takedownwrestle.com. Until next week, from our studios in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. Have a good week, everybody.